This episode brought to you by these awesome patrons and members. The ROM XC is on the bench. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Did you know that 75% of you watching right now are not subscribed to my channel? That's bonkers. Engagement is what makes or breaks a YouTube channel, and I need your help. Subscribe today, and let's build a community together. Today we have the ROM XC from Jeff Mazur and Dean Claxton. If you haven't seen my review of the Apple II version, check out my link in the card up there. This does the same thing, but for your Apple IIc, so let's check it out. Just like the ROM X for the Apple II, the ROM XC replaces the system ROM in your Apple IIc to store up to 15 ROM images and present them for selection via an on-screen menu. These images can be as simple as an official Apple firmware update, or they can be entire disk images to allow you to boot ProDOS instantly. You can even have your favorite game on an image, ready to go when you flip the switch. The ROM XC, however, comes with a twist, a built-in real-time clock with battery backup. Let's get to installing this beast. First, install the included battery in the ROM XC. Then open up your 2C by removing the six outer screws. Remove the keyboard. Lift out the old chip. Install the new chip. And then reassemble. When you're preparing your system, you'll want to check out the ROMX website at theromexchange.com. There you can find official software, updates, and instructions. That's where I found the updated firmware for this unit, so let's do that update first. Get the updated firmware disk from the ROM Exchange website. Get the disk to your Apple IIc using your favorite method, ADT, floppy EMU, etc. The firmware disk is DOS 3.3 bootable, so if you can boot directly to it, do that. Once you've found your way to the ROM XC disk, B run ROM XCE.disk. Press U, and then use P and select ROM XCE.firm. Select Bank Zero, then Y to confirm, and U to upload. 15 seconds later, your update is complete. Just power cycle your Apple IIc to see the new firmware features. To boot to the default image, just turn on the computer and wait. The image with the asterisk will boot automatically. To select a different default image, power on the computer and press the space bar immediately to stop the countdown. From there, you can press S to set the default boot image to whatever you like. Most of the features, like setting boot timeout and editing image data, are the same as the version for the Apple II, like I and then Control b to change the boot timer, I then Control i to edit the image information, which is a text description of the image, and I then Control d to edit image descriptions, which are effectively the image names in the menu. The ampersand T and ampersand D features both operate the same as in previous versions. Ampersand T loads a selected text font, and ampersand D loads then executes the selected image, and then the one at the indicated position. The new ampersand S option works backwards from ampersand D, loading the indicated image first, then the selected one. For example, the raster blaster image at slot 9 will first load slot 1 and execute it, then load itself and execute. The ampersand L option is used to specify a language to load in the language card at the indicated entry. In this example, it's used to load integer basic from slot B. Since this version contains a real-time clock, you'll need a way to set it. You can do this from the main menu by pressing I, then Control c Just use up and down to change the value, then left and right to switch fields. When done, press return to save your changes. The clock also supports programmatic control. The clock test utility on the firmware disk uses AppleSoft and can be used as a template for programmers. And finally, a driver is included on the firmware disk to add timestamp support to ProDOS. Another nifty feature is changing the banner, that is, the name shown at the top when you boot your Apple IIc. 
you can edit a ROM image and change the text, then save it back to the ROM XC to get a custom boot screen. It's very important to note that the ROM XC may not be physically compatible with some expansion cards. I tried it with my Applied Engineering ZRAM Ultra 2 card, and found that the battery socket won't clear the bottom of my board. Other large boards may have the same issue, so beware of that before ordering. And this demo wouldn't be complete without some instant choplifter. Of course, you can install your own ROM images by following the instruction guide. But the biggest added feature is the ability to ROMify an application. Now that process is way beyond the scope of this video. Basically, you can take your application code, modify it so that it can be auto-loaded by the ROMX process, then save it into a ROMX bank. This process has been fully documented by the 19-page instruction sheet, and it can be followed by adventurous types. Before we wrap up, there are a few things to note. First, the ROM XC does not currently operate in conjunction with accelerators like a ZIP chip or on a 2C+. They are working on overcoming those issues, however. I had a few other questions during my review process, and I asked Jeff Mazur about them. He was very helpful and had answers for most of my concerns. I thought the menu on the ROM XC was a little bit busy. I asked about using 80 column mode in mouse text to improve the menu. However, he has a shared firmware code base between the different ROMX versions, so adding those features would be complicated. Some features are hidden inside other features in an unintuitive way. Changing the boot timeout and the system time are hidden under the image info menu, for example. Jeff didn't have a direct answer for this, but plans for continued improvement. I thought that the names of the description and information features were somewhat backwards, but Jeff says that they've been left this way for compatibility reasons. I also feel that the menu should operate like most other boot interrupters and have a countdown to enter the menu on every reset. That way the menu can be re-entered without a power cycle. Jeff told me that during development they had some issues with it working that way, so they opted for their current paradigm. The instructions are well written. I received a beta copy that was a bit unpolished, but based on the instructions for the ROM X and the ROM XE, I'm sure that problem will be resolved in short order. Based on my personal experience, the small battery included has a notoriously short life. Jeff informed me, however, that the clock chip they are using draws a magnitude lower current than other solutions like the no-slot clock, so their calculations indicate a lifetime of several years. Overall, I think this is a pretty cool device. Having whatever ROM you like and instantly booting up any operating system are fantastic. Even better, having your favorite game preloaded as a ROM image is super cool. You can get a ROM XC from Reactive Micro or directly from Jeff and Dean if you're in Australia. Links are in the description. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. You can also support me on Patreon or by grabbing some merch on jcm-1.com. Links in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos. And remember, 8 bits are all you need.